Hello guys, as always, I am Dog Lightning, a Grandmaster Nico support one trick pony, but I'm going to be teaching you guys three tips and tricks that every Nico main must know, or if you're just looking to pick up Nico, it uh, doesn't matter what role you play Nico, I'm, these are the most important things that surprisingly a lot of people don't know. So here's me just flexing my rank, this is playing all Nico. But the first tip, if we go over here into the collections tab and we go to champions, Nico has to do with her ulti. So uh, a tip that a lot of people don't realize is that Nico's ulti, the last sentence here, the preparation is hidden if Nico is disguised. So this is really important. I'm not even kidding. I watch pro play games and I see pro players not doing this like in their ultis like recently wonder if you watch his games with the G2. Um, in the playoffs of LEC, he wasn't doing this before a lot of his ultis, and it really surprises me that pro players don't either do this or know it. Um, but basically what it means is that when you're using Nico's passive, the enemy team cannot see you casting ulti. So there's an animation when Nico jumps in the air like this. That's when the ulti gets revealed to the enemy team, but that whole time of her charging it up before the jump in the air, the enemy team can't see it. So from their point of view, they see a disguised person walking towards them, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Nico's jumping in the air and about to land ulti, which gives them a very, very small window to flash out. And if you're standing directly on the center of them, by the time it's revealed, it's impossible for them to flash out. AKA if you're using this and you flash on top of them last second, it's impossible for them to flash out of it because of the distance that they have to travel. So I over here am showing you guys uh, a cup, two examples of me using this in game just to show you how important it is. So here is a really, um, really intense case. So here I'm getting caught out and watch what I do, right? I put my passive up right now before I cast ulti so that they won't know I'm casting it. And this Vladimir right here is about to walk into me and not know that I'm casting alt. See, so I'm casting alt right now. They didn't know I started the ulti cast because of my passive. And now it got revealed because they broke it. But it's too late because Vladimir is already in the middle of it. So as you can see, this is a very, very, very intense situation. But I've gotten this down to like second nature that I'm used to doing it. Like, look at this. I instantly use my passive. I switch and start casting alt. He's walking into me because he didn't see it coming because of my passive. And then boom, he's hit. Now that was a very intense scenario, but it doesn't always, like, that's once you get the muscle memory down. Um, in a less intense scenario, here's another example of me. So the enemy team's doing dragon, right? And I already have the passive casted in advance, so you don't have to be, like, as quick as I was doing it before. Um, so here you can see I'm coming in, and I'm going to get a big Nico alt. So you're going to see right here. I'm casting it, they have no idea this cast is coming. These two, if they knew, if I wasn't using passive right now, these two would see me casting ulti, and they would instantly start heading up this choke away from me, and then when I flashed on them at the last second, they'd be able to flash out because of them seeing it, right? So I flash in, they see it now because I started casting proto belt, but at this point, it's too late. Again, if I had, if I started to hear them walk this far and they saw it, they'd have better reaction time to flash out. But look, look how close it is. They literally just barely get stunned here, just on the edge. I can almost guarantee you that this distance wouldn't have hit if I didn't cover up the beginning of the cast my ulti. This would have ended up with them being like right there or right there and flashing out if they had that extra little bit of time. And this is in a this is a grandmaster game, by the way. So if you guys are doing this in like your lower elo games where like the enemy team has worse reactions and stuff, it'll just make it easier. I always see Nico's in the Nico Reddit and stuff complaining, Nico's alt so bad, I can never hit it. And my biggest tip to those players is start doing this because this is the difference between being able to hit most of your alts and not. Like when you don't have flash up, sure, you're gonna be using it for disengage, but when you have flash up and proto belt up and you use your passive to hide it and you come out and all of a sudden just flash proto belt on them and they have no idea it was coming, um, it'll be the difference between you guys starting a lot of, uh, getting a lot of big alts. So we'll be moving on to tip number two in a second. I just want to quickly, if you made it this far, shout out my stream, please come check me out. I stream every day from five to 12 PM EST. I won't be streaming this weekend because I'm taking this weekend off, but, um, please come by and show support. I appreciate it. Okay guys. So for tip number two. Um, it kind of relates to the first tip a bit. It's more about how to use your passive without clicking on it. So you may have been wondering here how I so quickly use my passive to turn into Karthus without clicking. Look at my mouse up here, and I'm using my passive without clicking on it. So surprisingly, a lot of Miko mains don't know this either. You cannot do this in the client, by the way. You have to go into practice tool or something to do this. It doesn't work from the client. But if you go to your hotkeys, abilities, and summoner spells, and you scroll to the very bottom, there's champion specific interactions one through six. I think to start, they're automatically default as shift F1 through F5, but I personally re uh, keybind in mind to shift one through five because you use one through five for your, for your uh, 
uh, for your potions and stuff, your items. You use control those for the BM like emote spam, but your shift one through five isn't used for anything. In my head, it just makes a lot of sense to like click on those. So, yep, shift one through five, and I can use my passive. So, um, a little bonus tip in this section that I'll give you guys too is that with the passive, um, your passive actually turns you into a melee champion when you go into a melee champ. Which actually has more things than you'd realize. So in a couple patches about like three or two months ago, they made it so tower plates take 20% more damage from melee champs. So if I'm wailing on this as Mundo, I'm actually doing more damage than if I wail on it as Nico. You can see that even there, it's kind of obvious that like if you watch how much more damage I'm doing when I turn into a melee champ. So that's one use for it. Also, the other use is this relic shield if you're going support um, executes minions at 50% HP. So you can see this minion here. Right when it hits 50%, I can kill it. But if I'm ranged, well, that's because I have my empower auto. But watch this cannon right here. It didn't kill it because I wasn't turned into a melee champ. So if you turn into a melee champ, you can execute from 50% HP with the relic shield. And you can do 20, 50% uh, more damage to the tower. But the main point of this tip was the fact that you can use your passive without clicking on it. I would strongly recommend, even if this is too many for you to get used to, I know some people who just keybind the jungler to like their mouse button, you need to at least have one person because if you wanna, that first tip using your passive before ulti, if you wanna get good enough like I'm doing it where you're in the middle of a team find popping it right before you use your ulti, you need to keybind these. It makes a huge difference when you're not like clicking on it and you're able to just instantly do it with the click of a button and then R right after. So I hope this tip helped you and we'll now move on to tip number three okay guys so the final tip is that your e is a buffer and what this means is you can start the channel of it and you see there's a cast when she channels it and she like whips it back you can actually start the channel holding it back and then flash and when you flash you release it from where you flash to so what this looks like is if i e flash I casted the E back here, but it gets released there. So E flash, you can see it's getting released here. Now, if you watch the difference where if I if I flash then E, do you see how delayed that is? Take a look at it again. Really take a look. E flash compared to an E flash. So when you flash E, you flash and you do this whole animation going out. Um, it may not seem that slow, but when you're doing a flash E, that delay is enough time for this person to easily flash it, proto belt it, maybe even sidestep it if they're quick enough. But if you E flash, there is no reaction that they can sidestep it. They can maybe protobelt if they're quick enough. The real only way to dodge this is if the enemy has flash up. So basically, the best case scenario with E flash is you're going flash for flash, but if you're quick enough and they don't have flash or they're not quick enough, you can just E flash to land big roots. Trust me, it's hard at first. I practiced this a bunch in practice tool, did it in my rank games. Uh, I was missing a lot at first, but eventually I got the hang of it. It really just started to click and it's been like the biggest help to me ever. So you can also, another tip with this is combo with your ulti. So if you ulti and then last second flash, this guy has so much time to flash out because of the time where you can't move and it's going off, but you can combo it, right? You can go ulti and you can go E flash so that your E flash root hits him and you can't get out of your ulti before it comes down. If you know this target has no flash, flash up then sure you don't need to do that but if this target for instance you know for a fact has flash up he's going to flash your ulti then comboing an e flash in will make it a lot harder for him to dodge your ulti so one more cool little trick with it it's really hard to use but when you your cursor is here if you e but flash to a different direction it always goes towards your cursor so if i e then flash there even though i'm at a different angle right e and then flash here it'll still go off and you can do cool things with this right like i can like get this target right i can go e flash whoopsies I can go here and I can flash behind it, right? So I can go E flash and get both of them, right? Or I can, in the same way, I can go here and I can go E flash that way and get both of these targets, right? So that's a really complex version of it, but I'm just saying that the E flash has a lot of like versatility that you can do with it. And I promise you, out of all the tips, like this one is mm, the covering your alt, they're all really important to be honest, but just trust me that this is really important practice and in practice tool. So if you like this YouTube video and it helped you, like, comment, and subscribe. I'm thinking about doing an item guide for my Nico support soon. And um, check out my stream if you enjoyed it. It really helps me out. Till right, next time, guys.